How's it going, everyone? Lionheart plays here, and today we're going to be doing the postseason interview with the coach of the LA Inferno, uh, Lonely Hermit. First and foremost, my friend, how are you doing today? Great. I just woke up <laughs> like an hour ago. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> All righty. So let's go ahead and jump right into the um, the core of the uh, interview today. <clears throat> now. How did you feel about season five of the Elite Battle League overall, not specifically regarding your team? It was a pretty crazy season. <laughs> when yeah. you go back, <laughs> when you go back and look at the results and some of the things that happened this season, it was pretty crazy. You had a couple of coaches who kind of flew under the radar, didn't quite make a deep run in the playoffs, but they kind of flew under the radar. Smoosh, I think, is like one of them. Um, you know, like there is there is a lot of craziness this season, a lot of wild stuff. Uh, a lot of upsets. I mean, like you didn't make the playoffs. Sorry to bring it up again, <laughs> but that was like that was insane. And then there's just like a bunch of like crazy upsets within the regular season. We had a ton of like crazy matches. It was just crazy. That's just the word I would use <laughs> to describe the whole season. Just crazy, dude. It was probably the wi most wild season we've had so far, honestly. <laughs> Every season we've had is getting crazier and crazier as yeah. the time progresses, and this season is definitely no different. Yeah. Um, but I agree. Now, what are your general thoughts about your season as a whole? Although we kind of can guess what it is. <laughs> uh, man, <laughs> it, it's it's it was quite a season. <laughs> it felt really good. Um, there were certain points where I was definitely down um, mentally, I guess, regarding you know prepping and stuff like that, but. I just I just trusted my con uh, my my confidence level. I just trusted my my skills, my knowledge when I went into matches and I just played, you know, to the best of my ability with what I had. Um and it clearly panned out. <laughs> so, uh very very happy um with my season obviously, but for for obvious reasons, but I, I still I would be proud nonetheless even if I didn't walk away with everything. Already. I agree. It was definitely something to be proud of for sure. If you haven't catch if you haven't caught any of the matches make sure you catch his matches this man was an, an absolute beast <laughs> now we know you're a veteran you've had your inaugural season season two uh and you've uh done <clears throat> uh fair bit of work since then now do you feel that you were able to improve from your performance last season i think i kind of just picked up what i was already improving on i guess Okay. um what happened to my voice right there oh my god uh <laughs> um there so week one obviously not great <laughs> last season but weeks two through th through four i i just kind of hit this new level uh, um with my battling skill my sort of knowledge and things like that um obviously i like i beat bob i beat you beat alan like i beat some really good coaches then i i completely ran out of gas uh with my motivation this season I improved I, my improvements were there right from the get-go uh i hadn't i didn't have a slow start as per usual because i always end up having a slow start i um because i the, the, dude I, I didn't even realize the two seasons before season two and season four i didn't get a single kill in week one which is nuts um obviously turned that around this season i got off to a hot start um and i was able to use what i learned in season four improve on it and i was able to kind of i mean you helped a lot but i was able to really work through that that rut i fell into of not that lack of motivation i was able to just push through it uh and keep going so i definitely improved i took what i learned last season took it to this season and continued to sort of form it into something that i mean clearly worked <laughs> right <laughs> now gotta ask you would you have approached this season differently in any way uh, whether it would have been your general approach to matches or perhaps the way you drafted, any sort of thing like that? Um, I guess my, I don't know. I don't know because I would say prep, but it, it didn't really bite me until the playoffs because that's when things got really tight, really close. Like all the matches got close. Um, during the regular season, I did a good amount of prep. I didn't do, I did maybe, I can probably count how many practice battles I did on like my two hands. Like I, I did not do, I did like single digit practice battles, maybe a little more than that, but it wasn't a lot of practice battles. 
I think that helped a lot because I didn't I wasn't overthinking things. I didn't go into matches with this sort of like um predisposition like like a like this thought from the practice battles where it was just like oh he's gonna use this when you know when you do the actual match they don't use that and you're over prepped for that i didn't i didn't get in my own head basically with the practice matches um and the prep went well like i said it didn't i would say prep within the playoffs is really what i would change uh but ultimately i mean i was able to just just kind of ride the wave uh ride momentum in those matches um i guess prep if i had to answer i would say prep but I mean, overall, honestly, I think I approached the season in the best way I have uh, compared to my to my last two, honestly. Okay. Fair, fair. Now, for you, this may be a dumb question. Um, <laughs> were you more or less satisfied with how your season went? No, it was terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, obviously, very satisfied. Um, it felt really good because uh, I didn't just, I don't know, I beat some really good coaches along the way um i was able to really show a lot of what i was capable of last season and even season two to a certain degree um there were definitely signs of what was to come in season two <laughs> um and i showed a lot more in season three or sorry season four and then i was able to really put it everything i had on full display this season um and that felt they just felt really good i'm, I'm very 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 satisfied and proud of, of how this season went honestly good good now, do you feel that you lived up to any of the goals that you set out for yourself before the season started or kicked off? This might sound like me bragging, but all of them, actually. <laughs> you got, if all anyone has them. a right to brag, it's <laughs> uh, Every single goal. I think, I believe in my preseason interview, I said I wanted to win week one because I had never won week one. I did that. I wanted to make the playoffs without having to get into a playing match. I wanted to do that. I mean, I did that. Um... And then I said I wanted to get to the furthest point I had gotten to before, which was the semifinals. I did obviously better than that. Um, those were my three main goals. And I did all of them. Uh, and then the other one was like not get swept because I, I didn't want to do that again. <laughs> um, but uh, those were my three main goals. Win week one, make the playoffs without the playing match, and then get back to the semifinals again. I did all three of those things. So um, that actually also made the season feel a lot better was the fact that I lived up to all of the goals I set for myself for once. I actually managed to follow through on all of my goals. Um, and yeah, I, honestly, I, I genuinely, I, I think those were the goals I said in the preseason interview um and i i did all of them like I'm, I'm very happy with with uh with that honest like i just i'm very happy that i was able to, to follow through with all those goals all righty now <clears throat> what do you think was the strongest part of your game this season mm. i'd say my predictions okay um my predictions hit like a this like this transcendent level <laughs> where i was like reading people's minds basically um yeah even like in my own matches you could see it in the videos I, i'm calling shots um and even when uh we 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 were watching matches for our videos right the rankings and the roundup um i'd be sat there and be like he's gonna do this and he would do it like oh he's gonna do this and he's gonna do this and guess what they would end up doing that like uh even watching other people's matches i was predicting them um that was definitely a, a big part of my game this season like if it, it, it feel it always feels good to get a prediction right and right. i was nailing it i mean the best match to probably go watch is mine against mike his was a little easier because his movesets were the same um <laughs> but uh it was mainly the switches like i was calling all the switches and moving around there was that leafion play where i doubled back i think i doubled back out of runrigus into leafion or something like that um and i like hard predicted him when he went into a zoom roll um yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Zero Aura versus Rodriguez. And I had sent in Rodriguez and I double switched back out into Leafeon and he switched to his zoom roll. Um like that that match was a great show of my my level of predictions. But that again, that goes back to the sort of improvements thing. My predictions definitely took like another took a step in another like to another level this season. They were they've never been that good. <laughs> they were never really that good. Uh and then they just like last last season I was kind of just playing with my gut. Um, whereas this season I was playing with my gut, but I was also playing with a new level of confidence because got last season gave me a lot of confidence. So I was playing with this new level of confidence and, um, just this new knowledge, I guess, of what it's like to be, you know, a top dog, I guess, to have that sort of mentality. Cause I've always tried to emulate like you, Derek, 
with like the way you guys would battle um and i realized like i just got to do my own thing i just got to find my own style and it, I, that's what i did this season i just kind of did my own thing stayed confident in my abilities <clears throat> and my predictions were the main thing that like yeah went to another level this season i would uh, yeah my predictions that's the answer <laughs> good <laughs> um it's good that you found found your own style as well i think that's very important for any for, for whatever anyone does yeah. um now on the contrast what do you think was the weakest part of your game um i guess the weird i know i just said i had a lot of confidence this season but i guess sometimes i didn't entirely trust in my decisions Maybe it's because I was being a little more calculated this season, um, okay. and I was thinking things through more. Uh, I guess I kind of overthought certain things at some points. I would say maybe certain times I didn't trust. <clears throat> I didn't. I didn't trust my gut enough because there were times where I definitely could have made some risky plays, some calculated risks. Right? I could have taken some calculated risks, um, and I just didn't. I didn't trust in my own skill. I didn't trust like my gut, and I didn't follow through. Maybe I would say that uh, is just sometimes I didn't entirely trust the decisions i was coming up with on the fly and um i would do something else that's a lot safer when in reality i could have just taken the risk and it would have panned out obviously hindsight helps um but in the moment i definitely could have taken some more calculated risks this season especially in the playoffs um i mean one one that sticks out to me the most was when i switched into it was against pidge when his wishy-washy felt out of schooling and i think i switched to like lapras or something mm -hmm. or no no, no, no. I used draw run. I used draw run with my Lapras when it was in front of Wishy Washy because I expected him to go to Jolteon when in reality I could have just set up in front of him. Um, or I could have gone to Naganadel and killed the Wishy Washy. I could have done a couple things that were a lot more risky and maybe would have won the match a lot sooner for me. But, uh, you know, I just chose the safe route and, you know, the match obviously was incredibly close. <laughs> um, so there were definitely points where I could have trusted my gut a little more and I could have taken some more calculated risks. Fair, fair. It's a good answer. Um, now, if you could have changed your team in any way, would you have? Mm. See, this is an interesting question. I think most of my team was very solid um, with the way they work together, with the way they mesh together. I guess, I mean, on the outside looking in, I think if someone else were to answer this for me, they'd probably say Porygon. Because um, he kind of disappeared for like four weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used the week one and it didn't come back until the playoffs. I kind of forgot it was on my team. If I'm, being, if I'm being like brutally honest, I forgot it was on my team. Um, and that's that's why it didn't come back until playoffs. But on the surface, I guess the answer would be Porygon. But honestly, it still had a place and I definitely could have used it better. I'm not going to put that on Porygon. I'm not going to say I would have replaced it. Um, I think my nine was honestly one of the best teams that this league has seen. So uh, I am i wouldn't have changed anything. I think they all worked really, really, really well. <laughs> okay. Now, this might be a dumb question for you. Uh, but again, uh, again, I'd say it might be dumb because given, you know, the level, the, the prowess that you've demonstrated throughout the league this season. Um, were you able to understand your team quickly or did it actually take some time for you before you were able to fully understand it? Um, I think unknowingly I picked it up quickly. Um, it wasn't my original team. I, I think I've said this before. It wasn't my original team. I had like four different Pokemon that would have been on my team. Thankfully, it worked out that they all got sniped and I got the team I got because it worked out perfectly because I ended up with a better team for it. Um, I would say unknowingly I understood my team quickly and then as the weeks went on I just found my core rocked it and just went from there and I just hit my groove honestly by the time like week three rolled around I, I hit my groove like 100% I would say I started the season at like 80% okay. um and then by the time week three rolled around I was like in my groove I was just I was in my groove with the team figured out what you know worked what didn't work how I can make the mesh even better um and yeah it just it worked out like where I just I kind of picked it up quick without really realizing it. And then week two, I started really understand. And then week three, I just picked it up like fully and started, obviously started to go on a roll. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely picked up the team quickly and took it uh, to hundred percent by the time like mid season rolled around. Got it. Now, 
I think we all know the answer to this question, given, again, the performance of your team. But who do you feel your MVP was? Again, not necessarily stat-wise, but, like, the Pokemon that you feel had the biggest impact on your team, more or less. It's Zashin. <laughs> oh, of course, it has it's to be the dog. It's, it's Zashin, and then the backup is Naganadel. <clears throat> the, the legends were just on point this season. Um... They did so much work. If it wasn't Zashin, it was Naganadel. If it wasn't Naganadel, Zashin. It was one of them that was doing work. Obviously, we had a couple other Pokemon that uh, weren't the Legends that did a lot of work, too. Uh, I think that's the next question. <laughs> um, but it, Zashin's, Z the doggo, I mean, you had, you're the only other one that's had him. Actually, well, Landon had him, too. Um, but, I mean, before this season, you were the only one that had him, so obviously you would know. Um, Zashin was just, I mean, it's the first Pokemon that's back-to-back -back on the logo. <laughs> I think that kind of yeah. says it all, honestly. That that kind of says it all. Like Zashin was just a big, it's a big dog, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Zash Zashin went big in the playoffs, and the Ganado went big in the. I not not even that actually no they they alternated, <laughs> they really did alternate all season because the Ganado was like week one, uh. Kind of week two, week three, I think Zashin stepped up. Week four, I think Zashin stepped up. Then the Ganadel, then Zashin, then the Ganadel, then, then the Ganadel. <laughs> like they just they just alternated. Um, but I think I'd probably go Zashin above Naganadel, but like just barely. And Naganadel's right there, dude. Okay. Now, who were the sleeper Pokemon on your team? Like maybe like um, as in like a Pokemon who would go under the radar, but actually did quite a bit for your team. Runrigus. Um, Runerius actually did a lot for my team. It, it it's just such a good Pokemon. <laughs> it really is, is such a good Pokemon. He really it is. is such a good Pokemon. I saw how you you used it last season. We've had this conversation. I saw I used it last season, and I was like, I need that Pokemon on my team. I need it. Like it just looks, it just the way it works, what it does. Such a good Pokemon. Like the utility it has. It it did so much work with like the default, or not the defaults, uh, the hazes. Um the spikes uh stones all that stuff like it just did so much work for my team uh it shut down zamazenta against pidge in that then the semi-final uh to the point where it forced him to switch and then i, I think i said it in in the championship match but it, it is completely fitting that that pokemon was the last pokemon on the field in the championship match because it was my sleeper mvp like it did so much work this season if you guys go back and watch my matches just just pay attention to runerigas because it did a lot <laughs> it did so much to where people had to start paying attention to it um in the later matches they had to they had to have something for runerigas because it was just annoying and it did so much work um i think another answer also would be lapras i was gonna um, say don't forget the don't forget lapras. the other the other answer would be lapras i'm the best lapras user and no one can take that from me no because <laughs> i i saw its utility and its versatility and I, 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 obviously it shined against pidge um especially <laughs> it racked up like six kills or seven kills against pidge alone <laughs> that feels so bad he probably hates lapras now uh, <laughs> but it did a lot of work and it, it's kind of like rodriguez where i did enough with it that it forced people to prep for it it forced people to think about lapras it forced people to have something for lapras um that's why in the second matchup pidge brought jolty on that time because he had to have something for lapras and it still went off and got three kills like it still did that much work um so lapras and renegus are like i'd say lapras for the more offensive side like the okay. offensive work it did and then renegus for more of the utility um and those sorts of things and defensive honestly like they're kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum but they both did a ton of work and again i did enough with them that it forced people to have to prep for those two pokemon they had to have moves for them or else they were gonna get punished um so yeah, those two, absolutely the sleeper Pokemon on my team. To the point where they were, they, I guess they didn't really classify as sleeper Pokemon in the later matches because people had to pay attention to them. So um, I, I'd, I'd definitely say those two. Though. Renrigus and, and Lapras did so much work for my team. It's crazy. They were, they were, they were incredible. All right. Lapras is coming out of its corner now. Now that you it. <laughs> <laughs> it was crying. It was it's like, been, it's been taken every season, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> It's loved. It's loved. <laughs> you hear that? You're loved. <laughs> All right. So moving on here, we have, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So now, got to ask you, 
Now, as your season progressed, were there any issues that you uh, expected to run into, but ended up finding out that they didn't really turn out to be much of a problem? Um. Uh, do, 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 do. I guess the motivation thing. I mean, I, I kind of just pushed through that um, a lot better than I thought I would. I really did not want to continue when the playoffs came around. Um, and it did show, obviously, with the results and how they turned out, because uh, they were all very close matches. But I guess the motivation thing, I yeah, if I had to give an answer, it'd probably be that. But I, I definitely, like I said, with your help, I was able to just kind of push through that and and keep chugging on. One, you kept telling me one more game, just one more, just one more, <laughs> <laughs> and we pushed through and made it all the way. So I, I'd probably say that the motivation thing, wanting to wanting to continue, I guess. Okay. Um, now, was there anything that you found easier than you expected or something that just naturally came easy to you? Winning. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just surprised at how quickly I picked up my team, honestly. Uh, again, Porygon is still going to be annoying. I mean, I used it a little better later on. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a nice, you know, lead. It became a nice lead for my team. Um... But it will in the playoffs. But um, if I could use that better, then I would say I definitely use my team. Like, I definitely utilize my team incredibly well, I guess. Um, but just under understanding my team, uh, the understanding I had and how to how, not just understanding them, but how to make them work together. Because how does a Lapras and a Rodriguez work together? <laughs> but they did. And Zash and the Ganado, obviously, the Yin and Yang, they were a fantastic freaking duo. Um, and then everyone else just kind of slotted in and did what they had to do. You know, Rotom. Actually, Rotom, going back to the last question, also was a great Pokemon for my team. But everyone knows what Rotom he can do. Um, I feel like a lot of people were kind of writing off Lapras and Rodriguez. That's why I said those ones. But Rotom also did a lot of work. Um, but I'd say understanding my team and making them all just work together above everything else, making them all mesh and being able to carry momentum from like one Pokemon to the next and making sure that the, the transitions between them, like when one would die and the other would come in, making that go smooth. Um, so understanding my team and just making them work together uh, would be would be my answer to that one. All righty. Now, what were some of the highlights for you in the regular season? Uh, going five and zero, <laughs> um, beating Pidge the way I did in week two was probably the biggest highlight. Um, obviously, last season my week two and three were hard, and I managed to come out of them winning, winning both of them. Um, they were against some, some really tough opponents, and I managed to come out with with a win uh, in those matches. So I showed what I could. I showed I could beat some of the top dogs last season, and this season doing what I did against Pidge. Um, Especially after what he did to you, <laughs> I got my revenge. I got the revenge. I'm the Avenger of the league. <laughs> yes, um, I have been avenged. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, the, beating Pidge in week two the way I did just felt. It just gave. It, I mean, talk about confidence. That that was the main reason why I started to really be confident in my play and be confident in my decisions because I said, "Screw it, I'm running Curse. It's gonna work." And guess what? I ran Curse and it worked. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, that, that's when I really started to get confident in my level of play and find my own groove. Um, it was beating Pidge. That, that's where it really started because he's amazing. Uh, so beating him the way I did just gave me a new level of, of confidence. Now, on the contrary, what were some of the lowlights for you in the regular season? Uh, using baby doll eyes on Sogleo. <laughs> <laughs> I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I know the one thing that that cost me too, and it's a yes. similar. <laughs> stupid full metal body, stupid ability. <laughs> stupid Sogleo. <laughs> I'm changing mascots. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just the little mistakes, man. The little mistakes throughout the season. Uh, I definitely could have. The weird part is, like, a lot of those matches went smooth, and they could have gone smoother uh if i had you know ironed out some of the small mistakes that one being obviously probably the biggest one that i had um hindsight again does help those sorts of you know looking back on those sorts of situations but uh just a lot of the little things that i definitely could have ironed out i mean you can't be perfect but you know it still doesn't mean i, I would have wanted to fix them you know <laughs> you can't be perfect but i still would have wanted to do better on those little things like i said just that page thing being the example as well right right of course now 
obviously we know you made the playoffs, right? Um, now, what were your thoughts after your last game of the regular season as you were heading into the playoffs? Um, uh, I was thinking, okay, so I, I had just reverse swept Mike. So I was feeling really good. <laughs> um, and then I knew I had to face either Max or Timmy. Um, the No offense, but the preferred matchup was Max because I knew my team could handle his well. Uh, the only thing I was afraid of was the Calgary. Well, the Calgary, uh, did Max have Blaziken as well? I think so. I think so. Um, and then the Salamence, like those were his, obviously his major threats, those being the three. Um, I was afraid of those, but I was also, but like when you look at Timmy's team, I was much more afraid of his team because <laughs> he just had like a lot of powerful Pokemon. Um, not a lot of defense when you kind of look at it, when you really break it down, but just a lot of firepower. Um, and I know I had a lot of firepower too, and I had a lot of ways to stop that firepower, but I would have rather faced Max's team. <laughs> it was just less threatening, um, compared to Timmy's. So I, I definitely wanted Max. But obviously, it did not shake out that way at all. Uh, and I had to take on Timmy. So once I saw that, I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do this. Uh, again, obviously, the motivation level wasn't incredibly high, but um, I had a good support system around me. <laughs> and they were a voice in my head that just kept telling me, one more match, one more match, just keep going. Um, the voice in the ether. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it sounded like. You guys heard that voice? That's what it sounded like. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that the motivation level was a little low, but I was just like, let's do this. All right, let's go. Let's boxing match. Let's get this. <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> now, were the playoffs just as intense as you expected them to be? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, probably more so. Uh, obviously, all three matches I won in the playoffs we're by a combined plus two <laughs> okay. like that should show how intense they were i personally think you guys might disagree i don't know i think i was a part of the best match in the ebl at least the best match this season um when i went against page in the semifinals um it's it's like top three at least i'm not i'm not letting anyone take that from me <laughs> me and pidge because that was an incredible match with an insane ending like from a th like a thematic cinematic level that match was awesome <laughs> um but the yeah the playoffs were just so intense uh i went into them just trusting my gut you know trusting you know in my abilities and my god <laughs> it was just so intense uh every single match i stay i was very calm surprisingly throughout all the matches but um just because i kind of accepted my fate either way <laughs> pretty much um but they were they were so intense regardless they were just they were uh yeah so freaking intense man so intense <laughs> now we know that you ended up being uh being a finalist after the playoffs and everything how were you feeling right before the final Oh man, um, so I beat Timmy, I beat Paige, just close matches, down to the wire, um, I was like, I can beat anyone, I think now, <laughs> you know, I beat Paige twice in one season, which I don't know who can say that, I think you're probably, you might be the only person that I think can say that, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, cause Paige is great, <laughs> so beating him twice in one season is, is just that felt really good uh you know yet again i had gotten another confidence boost from pidge <laughs> from beating pidge um with the way that match ended with the way just the way i got into the final man i was like i was on, i was on cloud nine man um <laughs> and i had to take a week off i was the reason the, the finale got delayed by the way my dad got married and i was too distracted to to, to get uh to do any sort of prep which I didn't even really end up doing any prep. I did like maybe an hour of prep for the for the championship, but um, I was feeling good, man. I was feeling really good. Um, there's a lot of good stuff going on in my life too, as well. So that added to it. Um, I was I was feeling really good, man. I was on top of the world. <laughs> good, good. That's what we like to hear. We love that. Now, do you think you would have reached this point by the end of the season? I think I was capable and I think and I thought my team was capable of reaching that point if I if you asked me before the season started like if you had told me I've won the season like in the preseason interview like if you dropped a bomb on me and said you you won the season 
I would be kind of surprised. <laughs> I think I, I think I knew I was capable of it. The problem was the sort of motivation level and trying to, you know, stay motivated, motivated to continue and keep going and push through. Um, that would have been the reason why I would think that I wouldn't have reached this point. I knew I was capable, though. So I'd be a little I would have been a little surprised, you know, um, I, if you had told me. But at the same time, I, I would have known that at least I put in some really good work to get to this point, you know. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Now, <clears throat> everything ended. Regular season playoffs. You were the finalist. The end is here. You are now the champion. What were the What were your immediate thoughts right after the match was over? Oh wait, hold on. Let me go grab something real quick. How can I do this championship part without the trophy? <laughs> yeah, focus. Not focusing, whatever. It says champion. <laughs> um, yeah, it did. Oh my God. That was just such a good battle against Sly. I, oh man, I was just like, I was, I was just, uh, that, man, that, was such, that was such an intense playoff run. And it just felt really good to be the one that walked away with the win. Um, I yeah, it felt really freaking good, man. I was just I was happy. Um, I couldn't even. I was trying to keep it a secret from Carlos, and I couldn't even do that because <laughs> I had, I had to tell someone. Because <laughs> uh, I was just I was happy, man. It felt really good. And again, that battle was that battle was super like intense and tactical. <laughs> Uh, and it felt really good to come out on top in a tactical battle like that. Um, I was just, I was very happy. <laughs> Did you think you were, you would have been at the top before the season started? I mean, kind of the same answer um, as the other question is just, it just would have been a motivation thing. Like I would have been surprised that I pushed through all the way. Um you know, but at the same time, again, I knew my team was capable. I knew my team could do it. Um, I just, I, I knew, I knew, I knew, I would have known that my team was capable. I would have known what I was capable of. And I, I think I, I think I would have made it. I think I would have known that I would have made it like with the team that I had as long as I put in the work and that's what we did. So <laughs> it worked out. Now, Gotta ask you, how are you feeling now that some time has passed? Has it sunk in yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bring it up every day. I see people, you know, in public, and I'm like, hey, EBL champion. Hey, there you go. EBL champion. Hey, EBL champion. I'm in a crowd of people, and I'm like, they don't even know I'm the EBL season five champion. Perfect season. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it sunk in immediately, man. It hit right away. I was just like, First of all, it was like a wave of relaxation <laughs> because the stress was gone um, from having to do all the competing. Um, so that was that felt good. Like all of the stress level went down. Um, but it is. It yeah, it's 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 definitely sunk in, man. It's 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 still great. The trophy came like two. Uh, what's today? Saturday. It came like three days ago, two days ago. And it just kind of like put a bow on it, you know? Uh, it already it had already sunk in. Then the trophy came and it just like put a it just like put a bow on it and made it real, I guess. <laughs> you there know. You um, so yeah, it, it 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 definitely has sunk in. <laughs> I am the freaking champion. <laughs> now, what would you rate uh, your season as a whole, including everyone that participated, out of ten? What would your rating be out of ten? Oh man, this season, oh this season was crazy. I'd give it like a solid eight or nine Fair. um because there is just a lot of craziness this season like a lot of craziness a lot of great matches this season like i know there was more people than usual and that's probably why there are so many great matches there were also some not so great matches um let's let's be real there were a lot of highlights and a lot of uh, uh, quite a few lowlights um quite a few sweeps this season <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh sorry um <laughs> um but this is yeah there's uh, so many good matches i was fortunately a part of some of those really good matches um and 
it was it was a very entertaining season honestly so i'd give it like an like a solid eight maybe a nine on it like it was just such a good season all right now more or less the same question but if you could rate your personal season out of 10 what would you give yourself like a thousand (laughs) (laughs) i mean come on eight for eight beating some amazing coaches along the way um yeah i think i did quite well last season at this season um i yeah like freaking a million out of (laughs) ten i mean like they just it was an awesome freaking season man it was so awesome all righty now with all that out of the way do you have anything that you'd like to plug right here right now or anything that you'd like to announce uh yes actually thank you as if i don't have the questions right here Uh, (laughs) i didn't know that was coming um (laughs) well right now we have a an x and y soul link with jack nishin uh pokemon x and y if you didn't know uh (laughs) with jack (laughs) nishin soul link going on um with him we have a future collab series with a certain somebody coming soon um uh, (laughs) so that keep an eye out for that that'll be on the channel soon um and then we have a smattering of other videos going on we have a new fifa series i believe by the time this video comes out uh it should be on the channel if you guys like soccer or football at all then please check it out uh trying something new on the channel because why not um and we also do uh, streams are returning streams are actually returning to the channel it's crazy uh we do stream every every uh once in a while <laughs> on the every channel <laughs> <laughs> um trying to be more consistent so just keep it on the channel turn on the bell so you guys know when i go live um and yeah we got some streams we got some uh pokemon videos we also have some non-pokemon videos so keep an eye out on the channel for all that good stuff all righty now that's it for the la infernos postseason interview again with the coach lonely hermit do you have any last words for any of the fans out there thank you guys for the support uh my god the videos this season just got a ton of support um you guys killed it killed it with with the support this season on all the videos every single ebl video did it incredibly well uh every single one which is crazy like they all just got a a massive amount of support um so thank you guys thank you guys for all of that uh couldn't have couldn't have gotten this this without you guys without all that support um you guys are awesome big part of the reason why i i did what i did this season uh so thank you (laughs) love you guys Alrighty, now there you have it. I hope all of you have a fantastic day, and we'll see you soon for the start of season uh, season six of the Elite Battle League. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.